right? Because I think on a regular basis, just because of the nature of my position and yeah, the relationship with the city manager and the mayor, we probably get a lot of face time with you know, those individuals. And so I think we'll probably know the priorities just as well as or better than some of the other organizations. So I think we should be taking it upon ourselves to drive that process. Um, and so I think that will speak to more of the coordination. Whereas I think, and I won't say here, but in other cities, very much it's, you know, I'm in, you're only in this zone or this side of the I'm not responsible for these other things. I'm not saying my team will be responsible for them, but if we own the process, then we're responsible for coordination, right? And so I think that speaks to how we will expedite some of our investment as well, or the investment in our projects. Oscar, <coughs> coordination between Cincinnati Neighborhood Business District United and Invest in Neighborhoods and CDC Association is critical, but I think we all really strive to work together because, as Sister mentioned, there's situations in communities where there's multiple things going on, and it's important that you cooperate and coordinate because if not, you work it counterproductively, and I think it's important that we do that. Trade and development has been very, very good with the DOs in making sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you're talking about is coordination between <laughs> all departments, and I think that's critical because mm -hmm. I think one of the things we run into is that they're not always aware no, right. and they don't play well together right. consequently it's improving yeah. but I think do you see that as being a really critical part of what you're trying to do extremely critical uh, I mean I think where I've seen it done well is the cities that you know are, let's, let's just be honest about it the market is what it is you don't know how long rates will be favorable people are going to be interested in investing so you have to capture that right and so if we're not owning that process, potentially, you know, things get caught up in a pipeline, and, you know, before you know it, it, it's no longer advantageous to have somebody invest, right? And I mean, that's a, a, you know, hypothetical solution. But I think that coordination is key to our success. Um, it, but it's hard to manage as well. There's so many working parts, there's so many different priorities and funding streams associated with these funds. And what I'm suggesting is we won't be the expert of all of those things, but if we hope to manage that process from a project management standpoint, I think we'll go along. I totally agree that the coordination between um, all the city departments can be improved. Um, but I would say that when, and maybe I'm not hearing you correctly, um, but when it comes to being the driver of all of that work, this is, in my opinion, where the CDC becomes so important. You know, we should be the convener of all of these um, entities in the neighborhood. So when it comes to the education issues and the health issues and um, the economic development and housing and bringing it all together, it's really the CDC that should convene those groups yeah. rather than sit rather than the city because we're the ones on the street you know, doing doing the work. But then that gets to our next point is that we all need more staff to do that. Um, <laughs> we're currently in Madisonville convening education groups and health groups and all these different groups which are outside of our expertise. You know, where we're talking very specific about social service issues, for example, and education issues. Um, but you know that is the important work that a CDC can do in all the city neighborhoods with the with the right staffing levels. Yeah, no, great. Um, and let me just qualify what I was suggesting. Uh, what I was suggesting is the fact that the deal is in front of us. Uh, you know, only the process associated with that, not you know the the bigger picture. I, I totally agree with that. And you make a distinction. Uh, is there anything within what you? do it involves like getting agreements from businesses when they locate in neighborhoods to employ the residents of those neighborhoods either to build the building if they need to have a building built or to hire people from the neighborhoods to work in the business once it's up and running. Right. Unless you want to speak to that. Yeah. So I think uh, Oscar very much is is, is starting down down those lanes to where our talks towards developing policy as well as our, our discussion on incentives moving forward very much has the neighborhood in mind. Be that these these need to be developed obviously and fully fleshed out. But uh, very very much interested in, in uh, that development or any incentive given towards that development that the neighborhood benefit from a portion of it, uh, be, be that administered through our department or be that through the CDC group or be that through the neighborhood business district. Uh, I 
think those are going to be discussed in the very near future. But, but very much interested in uh, as you attract business, as you attract housing development, that you also attract um, other a portion of those incentives to assist with things, green space, to assist with things like job creation, to assist with things like uh, further development of underutilized areas within your community. All of that's on the table. All of it's being discussed. And, you know, I've been here 31 years in June, and uh, this is the best I've seen it moving forward towards that end. Uh, very excited about that. I think part of our discussions moving forward with Patricia Gary and certainly with uh, the other groups represented in here will be towards those ends and, and trying to implement some of that on future projects moving forward. I don't know if all of you have looked at the the task force report which is up on our website right on the home page but it's exactly those ideas and it's yes. funny how many you know how much agreement I've gotten because it, like the mayor was kind of on the same page so many people right. on the same page all at the same time not really talking to each other but as the task force report had circulated it's already in there so that it, so that now we hopefully are moving I, forward. I, I, I'll add one other thing I, I think as we discuss funding and moving forward with funding you know I'm constantly screaming and yelling any way I can <laughs> don't forget the neighborhoods. Don't, don't forget neighborhood development and reinvestment. Uh, Oscar's listening. Uh, uh, I, I think, you know, sometimes you get shadowed you know, with trying to attract larger businesses to the city, trying to attract, grow your downtown, uh, even your neighborhood business district. But I think you very much have to continue to focus, or, or any focus you do has to continue to include the neighborhood reinvestment. And, and it's certainly the good work that all of you are doing. Uh, as I look around the room, some of you have been in it longer than me, and, and uh, I won't say your name, uh, <laughs> but, but, but some of you have been in it longer than me. Some of you I've learned from, and, and the rest of you I'm working with in some capacity, but very much the fight continues uh, that, that we are represented, that there, there's funding available for neighborhood development, neighborhood growth, redevelopment. And all that comes with that. So, it, so it, again, I think uh, very much on the table for discussion. I've been allowed <coughs> in the room for full discussions and, and my views. Oscar's taking them very seriously. Bill Fisher is working with me on them. I think we got a great shot in the very near future of, of doing that reinvestment within the, you know, within the neighborhoods. Obviously, your support toward convincing council will be very big. Just don't say I told you. Oscar, I'll ask. Um, many times it's been talked about Sarah's point is valid. It, there's just not enough hands. But at the same time, there's probably not uh, enough money to fund 52 organizations, 52 debt in the debts. In your experiences in Washington and Chicago, did you see sort of consolidated or at least some back office operations or examples of where CDCs were using a lot of co -op, you know, collaborative staff and sharing and doing those kinds of things? And did the cities promote that kind of stuff as far as it used it when the dollars and cents to yeah, encourage those things? That's a good point. I, you know, I, I didn't get into that level of granularity, but I, I remember, and I might be wrong here, you know, th this is a challenge everywhere. In California, I think the governor had done away with some of the community development organizations. So, I mean, I think what I have seen and what's what served governments and different organizations well is just, you know, having to do more with less and, and thinking strategically about how lean an organization should be and focusing your energies on your priorities. Uh, but I, I, unfortunately, I don't have an answer. To yeah, let, let, me, let me add something to that too, if I if I can. I, I think. Uh, heard of both, both ways. We've heard that uh, we have enough CDCs. We've certainly heard that we've got emerging growing neighborhoods that need a CDC. We even heard that the, the third realm where perhaps the ones that are working well, and you know who you are, uh, mostly in this room, uh, that can help with those other areas to grow there. So three different ways it's been put on the table. Uh, uh, dealing with a shrinking federal budget unknown shrinking federal budget, very difficult to plan uh, in the future towards. Uh, trying to capture some of that capital budget uh, is very crucial. 
but 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 my God, the competition for that capital budget just just grows every year. Uh, so so I think um, your task force is a great effort moving forward. I think it it uh, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, a lot of people in this room are on that. A lot of hard work moving forward. I think it, it's opening eyes. I think it it, it is a challenge to invest back in your neighborhoods. And I think that's the way you do it. Uh, um, hopefully we'll get the necessary votes, uh, five if I count them correctly, that are gonna be necessary to move forward. Uh, and, and I think that that uh, we then are gonna have to sit down and talk with what comes in because uh, every neighborhood is gonna want one eventually. Should that be the way you go? Or should there be collaborative support with the steering group to help those others grow? I'm not sure right now, but, but I, I do know that uh, the ones we have, we're, we're trying to desperately continue to support and fund, yet we are very open for growth as it, as it uh, presents itself in the near future. Let me throw something out there. If there are any other questions, or at least uh, for a second. The, the other thing we're talking about in terms of a number of different, uh, what we've tagged as workshops, and so for some of the community organizations, we're thinking that you know we should very much own uh, our tools within our toolbox. And so obviously there's various levels of people's comfort levels with those tools, uh, but I think here shortly, uh, before hopefully before the end of the year, we're gonna start to do workshops on you know what are our tools so people can get acclimated with those, uh, with those different uh, tools that we have currently available. And then hopefully as we think about some new innovative ones, uh, You guys have been pretty timid. There's got to be some tough questions out there. Question. In your planning, or in, in, or is there any consideration moving forward that there could be a component of education and uh, data tracking and resources for people like us in this room who aren't, I don't know if everybody, how many people in here are professional urban economic planners or uh, real estate developers or whatever. But I, I've worked in other municipalities uh, outside of Cincinnati where they do have resources in place to help uh, track trend and benchmark um, certain projects and programs that help us understand better what better fits our neighborhood or how to define what we should be working on from a developmental standpoint. Is it, is it economic infrastructure or is it yeah. in, in cleaning up life and, and, and making properties or is it a mixture of both? Yeah. I think a lot, we could do a lot more. I, I hope I can speak for the group, maybe in some way, that we could do a lot more given a resource, just somebody to call and help us plan through things and make sure we're not off in left field, get us kind of steer on the right track with uh, you know, with some of the other successful communities outside this area and other, like from Chicago and the other places you've mentioned. Yeah. What are some of the things they've done? What are some of the things, models that work? And what, what are some that don't, that we don't waste time and maybe spend in five years going one direction and realize, hey, we're at a dead end road, let's, let's move back this way to, to, to better utilize the funds, with lending funds on the horizon potentially. Uh, how do we get the best bang for our buck? How do we make sure that we're executing the best plan for our community? Because a, you know, the Debbie community, I'm sure, sits and talks about five or six different major things they want to try to get accomplished. It's never just one thing. Where do we get the best bang for our buck? And what kind of resources could you, for your office, provide that would help us? In other words, 10% of investing a small percentage in us in education and training and resources could you you have a bunch of soldiers out here that could really you know, go to work and hit the target better. Just a little bit of that input. You know, yeah, or that. That, that type of resource on it and yeah, supposed to concur or not. Yeah, but I brought you that. I know this is a great point. So let me tell you about two things that we're thinking about. I'd love to hear people's thoughts on this. So the two things, uh, one, obviously the workshop will lend itself to some of that, which you're talking about, right? Uh, but the other piece that we're talking about doing is, you know, there's a couple different plans out there for Cincinnati on economic development. Thinking about doing a strategic plan associated just with our office, right? So it's taking another step down and talking about the level of detail that probably we need so people can make informed decisions on our appetite for investment. I think he'll speak to that. The other piece, though, is our website. So we're going to be coming out with a new website. <clears throat> and on that website, this is what I'm toying with now, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. We have the functionality now where you can go on our own website and build reports, right? Some of the data is there available for you, so I don't know if you know that, but it, it's there. My question then is, for organizations like yourself, I would think that you know it's our job to mine that data and present to you what I think is the most interesting for different organizations, right? Versus having that, I don't know how how often, and actually we're starting to track that now, how often people are building reports. And what I've suggested to the team is, rather than having that functionality, why don't we just say what most people are looking at 
build a one pager and then present that on our website. Because I think the more robust organizations have analysts and teams that can do that, right? For people that are leaned on their, for, uh, their workforce or their staff, they probably need a little bit of help there. And so I think, you know, we could always leave that functionality there, but I think it's our job to then present that information to you in something that's easily for, easy for you to digest. Um, so I'm kind of toying with the idea now, but I think that we're leaning more towards one-pagers on key facts associated with neighborhoods and different things, once again, to make it easier for you guys. Well, well you know, just in my experience, I can't speak for the group here, but we've got a lot of enthusiastic you know, people that are gung ho about getting things done. I'm not sure how much all of us have the knowledge and the resources in that in right. your experience. Yeah.